How will cannabis survive the apocalypse? Did William Shakespeare smoke a bowl before he wrote a play? Why do you get the munchies after toking? Which presidents liked to get dank on their downtime? And can you smoke so much weed that it kills you? These are 50 chronically insane facts about weed. Fact 50. Cannabis is believed to be one of the earliest plants to be cultivated by humans. Mentions of it have been found in writings from as far back as 3000 BC, and possible evidence of cannabis use has been identified in Neolithic archaeological sites that are over 10,000 years old. Most of the early evidence of cannabis use comes from Asia, with prehistoric cannabis residues and hemp fiber imprints having been found across China, Japan, India, and the Middle East. Historians believe that these ancient cultures used the plant not just for its psychoactive properties, but also to make rope, clothes, shoes, paper, and even as a food source. Fact 49. Have you ever wondered where the word marijuana actually comes from? Well, there are a couple of competing theories. According to one popular story, it comes from a Nahuatl word, meaning prisoner. This explanation probably isn't true, though, as it was first popularized by anti-drug campaigner Harry J. Anslinger in the 1930s. The more likely explanation is that it comes from the Chinese Maharen Hua, meaning hemp flower. Ganja, another popular nickname for the drug, comes from the Sanskrit word for the hemp plant. Fact 48. People have had it out for cannabis for over 700 years. Throughout history, marijuana has been mainly used for medicinal and spiritual purposes, but even so, it's always been a pretty controversial substance. In fact, the first known laws restricting marijuana use come from all the way back in the Middle Ages. The earliest known anti-cannabis legislation is believed to be a law passed in the 1300s by an Arabian emir called Sodun Sheikhouni. Cannabis use was also made illegal by Napoleon Bonaparte during his reign and was widely outlawed throughout the British Empire during its heyday. Fact 47. The United States has something of a love-hate relationship with the hemp plant. America started restricting the sale of the drug in 1906, but only made it outright illegal in 1937 when the Marijuana Tax Act was passed. For some reason, hemp was outlawed alongside cannabis, but that wasn't the case for long. Once the US entered World War II, the government started making propaganda that encouraged hemp cultivation, since the hemp plant could be used to make cheap but durable rope and canvas that was vital to the war effort. Hemp was then banned again in the 70s under the Controlled Substances Act, and the plant remained illegal until the Controlled Substances Act was revised in 2018. Even though the cultivation of hemp is still strictly regulated, in 2019 the US managed to become the world's third biggest hemp producer after China and Canada. Fact 46. Urkel has his own bespoke line of weed. In 2021, actor Jaleel White launched his own brand of recreational weed called It's Purple, a variant of the Purple Urkel cannabis strain. Jaleel White, of course, was famous back in the 90s for playing the nerdy Steve Urkel on the sitcom Family Matters. When asked about It's Purple by Forbes, White said he started the business because he was tired of seeing his character's name and likeness used without his involvement, and figured he could get in on the action. He even filmed ads for it alongside Snoop Dogg, where he was fully in character as Steve Urkel. Fact 45. Reggae legend Bob Marley was buried with weed. Perhaps one of the most famous tokers of all time, music god Bob Marley took the plant to the grave with him. When he died of cancer in 1981, according to some accounts, he was buried with a football, his beloved Gibson Les Paul guitar, and a bud of chronic. Hopefully, he's still lighting it up in the great beyond. Fact 44. There are over a thousand ways to say it. Literally. Time Magazine has reported that there are over 1,200 popularly used slang terms for cannabis, and here are some of our favorites. Weed, bud, ganja, chronic, grass, wacky tabacky, reefer, herb, green goddess, sweet Mary Jane, Donna Juanita, pot, dank, and the devil's lettuce. If we forgot one of your favorites, let us know in the comments. Fact 43. Tupac's closest friends smoked him. And no, that's not a euphemism. When Tupac was tragically murdered in 1996, his old band and close friends the Outlaws claimed to have gave him a true rapper send-off, rolling some of his cremains into a joint with some weed and smoking him up. While some have doubted these claims, the Outlaws themselves have stuck to their story. Personally, we think this one's up there with Marley's coffin weed. Fact 42. A group of weed-hunting teens invented 420. 
It's one of the most popular codes for cannabis, and it's the reason that April 20th, previously best known as the birthday of the decidedly unchill Adolf Hitler, is now synonymous with sharing some herbal love. In the early 1970s, a group of high schoolers from San Rafael High School in California went hunting for a legendary weed farm in their area, using the code 420 to signify the hunts. While they never found the El Dorado of Ganja, their story and their secret code got picked up by the magazine High Times and the band Grateful Dead, leading to the phrase becoming forever cemented in cannabis culture language. Fact 41 Washington was the first U.S. state to legalize recreational marijuana use. And this is kinda poetic, given the state's namesake, America's first president, George Washington, famously cultivated hemp crops. He was a big fan of the plant, mentioning it over 90 times in his personal diaries. But there is no evidence that he ever used it to get high. Instead, he likely grew the plant due to its valuable resource for manufacturing those sturdy ropes we mentioned earlier for use in ship construction. The original United States flag created by Betsy Ross was even made out of the kind of hemp that Washington loved cultivating. It's as American as apple pie. Fact 40. A lot of celebrities smoke weed. Seriously, it'd be a whole video to list them all, but some of the most prominent famous avowed potheads include Jennifer Lawrence, Kirsten Dunst, Miley Cyrus, Zoe Kravitz, Lady Gaga, Brad Pitt, Jane Fonda, Harrison Ford, Charlize Theron, Pete Davidson, Morgan Freeman, Patrick Stewart, Rihanna, Snoop Dogg and Seth Rogen, duh, Willie Nelson, uh huh, Woody Harrelson, Kendall Jenner, and Matthew McConaughey. And those are just the ones who admit it. Fact 39. Washington wasn't the only president with a history of weed use, and these presidents actually did smoke it. George W. Bush is an admitted weed user, and Barack Obama even had a weed smoking club in his youth called the Chum Gang. According to some of the Chum Gang's other members, Obama actually pioneered some new weed consumption techniques, including TA, or total absorption, and roof hits. And yes, there is a cruel irony to the fact that both those presidents smoked weed but neither of them legalized it on the federal level. We guess they just wanted to keep it all to themselves. Fact 38. The government could be making billions of dollars from marijuana. Extrapolating from the tax money that states with legal weed have already made, it's estimated that across the entire United States, the federal government could make $8.5 billion in tax revenue, and potentially more if they institute a so-called potency tax, where taxation of cannabis is put on a sliding scale based on how potent the strain is. And even this is nothing compared to the money that private industry stands to make. It's estimated that if weed was legalized in all 50 states, it would quickly become a bigger market than organic food. Fact 37. The U.S. military experimented with weaponized weed. Researchers at the Edgewood Arsenal facility in Maryland pioneered dimethylheptylpyrin. Try saying that three times fast. An extremely potent cannabinoid agent that had an elimination half-life of 20 to 39 hours. That's some serious sticky. In addition to the standard sedative and hallucinogenic effect, it also caused a low blood pressure, dizziness, fainting, ataxia, and muscle weakness. So much so that someone under the effects of dimethylheptylpyrin had difficulty even standing upright. Obviously, the researchers at Edgewood didn't invent this just so U.S. soldiers could get high on government-subsidized ultra-weed. They were exploring the possible use as a non-lethal crowd control agent, but that fell through because of the potential risks involved to the health of certain at-risk users and the political sensitivity of working with weed. Fact 36. For some people, marijuana use is a religious affair, and some countries even legally recognize this. In Italy, after a lengthy court battle back in 2008, it was deemed that people of the Rastafarian faith could keep weed for purely personal use as a religious sacrament, and in possession cases, it would be up to the courts to decide, based on the quantity of the weed, whether it was for personal use or trafficking. Fact 35. Weed is giving coffee a run for its money. At least in Denver, in 2011, some counts showed weed dispensaries outnumbering Starbucks locations 300 to 266. Weed dispensaries were so rife that a popular local magazine even had a weed reviewer who gave their take on the local chronic. Fact 34. Weed is the world's favorite illicit drug. While debate rages on about how exactly weed is classified, one thing definitely isn't up for debate. The fact that people absolutely love it. According to some data, 219 million people, that's 4.3% of the global population between the ages of 16 and 64, used cannabis at least once in 2021. Fact 33. One of the first sales ever brokered on the internet was allegedly weed. 
1971, a Stanford student and an MIT student connected over the ARPANET, the precursor of the internet created by the precursor of DARPA. How did these two students of two of the country's most prestigious learning institutions use this connection forged over a revolutionary new technology? To get high, of course. They organized the sale of weed and in the process became accidental pioneers of illicit e-commerce. Fact 32. How much weed does it take to kill you? Well, we can only discuss this theoretically given that there are no recorded deaths related to cannabis overdose. Of course, it is possible to have a bad reaction, especially if you take too many edibles, which have a more potent high than smoking. But when it comes to drugs that are still illegal, cannabis is still one of the safest out there, compared to fentanyl where as little as 2 milligrams can be fatal. Fact 31. Some people have proposed medical marijuana for dogs. However, while some pet owners have given anecdotal evidence of their sick pets having pain relieved by marijuana, most veterinary experts are skeptical. Dogs in particular are extremely vulnerable to marijuana toxicosis, especially when weed is consumed in a vector that dogs already shouldn't be eating, like brownies. So just to be safe, stick only to the treatments prescribed by professionals when treating your sick pets, or you could be putting their life on the line. Fact 30. Weed is in the air over Italy. And no, it isn't because Italy has a massive Rastafarian population who just love indulging in their newly legalized religious sacraments. We're not entirely sure why they did this, but Italy's Institute for Atmospheric Pollution Research decided to conduct a year-long study to monitor the effects of psychotropic substances in the air in eight different Italian cities – Bologna, Florence, Milan, Naples, Palermo, Rome, Turin, and Verona. They ended up finding trace amounts of marijuana and cocaine in all eight of them. Fact 29. A North Carolina hospital thought people were toking up around newborns. Social services started getting extremely concerned when urine tests from a number of newborns appeared to show trace amounts of marijuana in their systems, believed to be a result of secondhand smoke from overly mellow parents. However, when they dug deeper, they found out that the actual truth was even stranger. Chemicals in several different baby soaps, specifically Johnson & Johnson's Head to Toe Baby Wash, Johnson & Johnson Bedtime Bath, CVS Nighttime Baby Bath, Aveeno Soothing Relief Creamy Wash, and Aveeno Wash Shampoo seemed to trigger false positives for marijuana. If this wasn't discovered, it could have resulted in some life-ruining accusations getting thrown around. Fact 28. Illegal weed operations have been killing off owls. In another valuable argument for legalization, Illegal pot operations have been having a ruinous effect on local ecosystems. In 2012, two rare spotted owls were found dead in Northern California's Mendocino County. The culprit? Rat poison, specifically rat poison used by a local illegal Kush operation to keep pests away from their crop. But it isn't just the owls. The fisher, a rare forest mammal native to the area, has also been put in a dangerous position by careless weed farmers. Rat poison has been found in the system of 85% of dead fishers found in the area, also believed to be caused by illegal weed operations. Fact 27. Is weed getting stronger? Researchers studied 36,800 samples of weed captured by the DEA over the last 20 years and found two interesting results. The amount of THC, the psychoactive compound in marijuana, has increased, and the amount of CBD, the chemical compound most often touted as having health benefits, has decreased. So when old stoners tell you that the weed was more chill back in their day, they're not just blowing smoke. Well, they probably still are, but just not about that. Fact 26. You can be allergic to weed. As if life for people with allergies wasn't hard enough, yes, you can also be allergic to Puff the Magic Dragon, both its pollen and its smoke. Allergic reactions can include runny noses, sneezing, irritation of the nasal passages, hives, and in one extremely rare case, anaphylaxis. For some people who experience allergic reactions to weed, it isn't actually the weed itself that gets them. Improperly stored weed can sometimes get moldy, and that mold sometimes has allergenic properties. Fact 25. Weed dependency is a genetic lottery. Like with all drugs, everyone has a different tolerance for weed, and the same goes for whether someone is likely to become dependent on it. Researchers have identified three different genetic markers as predictors for the likelihood of cannabis dependence. Fascinatingly, these same genetic markers are often also predictors for depression, showing that people who suffer from depression are sometimes more likely to use weed as an unhealthy coping mechanism. Fact 24. If you're an unlucky stoner, you might get cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. And that might sound horrifying, but, well, there is no but. 
It actually is horrifying. Chronic cannabis users who suffer from the syndrome will experience periods of severe nausea followed by cycles of profuse vomiting and abdominal pain over a 48-hour period. That doesn't sound like a fun time to us. Fact 23. Drug traffickers can get really creative with how they smuggle weed. Here's a highlight reel of some of the most deranged ways weed has been smuggled. 766 pounds of pot hidden in broccoli, 1,500 pounds hidden in coconuts, 4,000 pounds hidden in fake limes, $500,000 worth of it hidden in fake carrots, and even weed hidden in vats of strawberry jam. It's kind of weird how most of them are just fruits and vegetables. Let's see some creativity, guys. Fact 22. Debates have raged on for years on whether Shakespeare liked to partake in a bit of the devil's lettuce. During an excavation of the immortal bard's home, two pipes were found with, among other things, cannabis residue. Immediately this, plus Shakespeare's reference to a noted weed during one of his sonnets, had people claiming that one of history's greatest playwrights was an avowed stoner. This immediately led to scholarly debate after scholarly debate, with some on the side of weed and the skeptics claiming that there's no proof that the pipes even belonged to Shakespeare. The debate has raged on for so long that Francis Thackeray, an anthropologist from South Africa, has requested the opportunity to exhume Shakespeare's grave and test his remains for any traces of cannabis. They might be taking this a little bit too seriously. Fact 21. Weed might change how you think about money. Studies have shown that cannabis reduces activity in the nucleus accumbens, a reward center of the brain involved in dopamine production. Those under the influence of cannabis are less likely to produce the kind of dopamine that motivates them toward external rewards, like money. That's why it can sometimes be difficult to get anything done while you're high. That and the fact that you're spending too much time thinking about old SpongeBob SquarePants episodes. Where does he get those pants? Fact 20. Why does weed give you the famous munchies? It's all down to the three magic letters THC. It stimulates the endocannabinoid receptors in the brain, which connect to regulation centers for everything from dopamine production to hunger. In most users, this triggers an appetite increase that has them reaching for the potato chips. While to most people this is just a little annoying, it can actually serve as a major medicinal effect for people undergoing a loss of appetite during chemotherapy. Medical marijuana can even get these in-treatment cancer patients eating again, which is a huge boon for their overall health and quality of life. Fact 19. The Rastafarians aren't the only religious group who use cannabis in holy ceremonies. And we do mean holy ceremonies, with an eye. During the Festival of Colors, many Hindus enjoy a nice, refreshing cup of tandai, which literally means cooling off. But for some, the tandai is a little holier than others, because it's spiked with bahang, an edible strain of cannabis found in India. Partakers have reported feeling a light, pleasant buzz upon consumption. The holy significance of the bahang-triggered tandai links to an old tale about Lord Shiva, but that's a little too much to get into in a video about fun weed facts. Fact 18. Cannabis can be used to treat epilepsy. As a life-threatening chronic condition that's believed to affect around 50 million people globally, doctors and scientists are always looking for new treatment options for sufferers. Thankfully, certain synthetic cannabinoids have shown promise in reducing the severity of seizures. The FDA-approved drug Epidiolex has been effective in treating two different extremely rare and dangerous forms of epilepsy. Lennox Gastaut syndrome and Dravet syndrome. And as cannabis laws continue to relax, even more of the medicinal possibilities of cannabis are likely to be explored by researchers. Fact 17. In some cases, cannabis can actually help treat other addictions. The lighter side of the nucleus accumbens dulling comes with the fact that cannabis use can reduce cravings for other addictive substances if a person is trying to break their habit. This is true for more common addictions like alcohol, as well as some of the harder addictions. In more extreme cases, cannabis has even been an unexpected boon in helping people affected by the opioid epidemic. Fact 16. If you're at genetic risk of schizophrenia, you should keep off the grass. While this won't be the case with most users, multiple studies have shown that people genetically predisposed to psychotic disorders, like schizophrenia, may see their chances of developing symptoms worsen, especially if they use cannabis or are exposed to cannabis use earlier in life. In addition to lowering cognitive function with extended use, it increases the likelihood of hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia. Plenty of cannabis users report temporary paranoia during use, but when you're still experiencing it between sessions, then maybe it's time to lay off the leaf. Fact 15. One of the biggest steps back for America's marijuana legalization came with one of its most controversial presidents, 
Tricky Dick himself, Richard Nixon. As we know from the hours upon hours of rambling recordings he took of himself, Nixon's war on drugs was actually a war on disenfranchisement, intended to lock up and take the voting rights from hippies and black people who generally opposed his policy positions. And the racist legacy of Nixon's war on drugs still exists today. Black people are arrested at greater rates for weed possession than white people in America, even in states where marijuana is legal, all thanks to Tricky Dick. Fact 14. Why is an edible high so much different from a smoke high? It's practically a meme among weed lovers that while smoke hits you quicker, edibles wait for a bit and then hit you like a truck. They give a more powerful body high that can endure for hours and leave you in a living dream or a waking nightmare. So what's the difference? Why the delayed action and upped intensity? According to neuroscientist Nick Giacomas, the issue isn't that weed is metabolized differently, it's that it's going to get metabolized to different degrees in different parts of the body, depending on the route of administration. The real difference between edibles and smoking or vaping is that with edibles, a much larger fraction of delta-9 THC makes it to the liver first. There it gets converted to 11-hydroxy THC. So in other words, if you smoke or vape, the ratio of 11-hydroxy THC to delta-9 THC is quite low, and if you take an edible, it's much higher. Fact 13. Weed will survive the apocalypse. That's because cannabis seeds are just one of the many samples kept at Svalbard Global Seed Vault. They store over 21,500 cannabis seeds from 17 different countries, kept safe and sound in the event of an ecological collapse or a world-ending cataclysm. So don't worry if you're part of the post-apocalyptic tribe or a Mad Max-style raider gang in the wasteland, you can still enjoy a toke at the end of the day. Fact 12. The inventor of weed brownies was a plucky American activist. Mary Jane Rathbun, and no, that isn't why weed is called Mary Jane, it's just a funny coincidence, was also known as Brownie Mary and was a pioneer for both cannabis legalization and the rights and protections of people suffering from AIDS at the height of the AIDS crisis. As part of her charity work for AIDS patients, she'd bake cannabis into brownies and give them out, and in the process, she noticed that it seemed to alleviate some of their suffering related to their illness. Her work is likely one of the many important foundations for cannabis research and activism to this day, and her work is still used despite her passing away from a heart attack in 1999. Fact 11. In Bhutan, the weed is as plentiful as it is illegal. It naturally grows there, especially in the Bhutanese countryside where it's so prolific that in some places it grows out of the cracks in pavements. It's illegal to cultivate it as a drug in Bhutan, but farmers often feed it to their pigs to fatten them up. Maybe humans will someday get that privilege when the pigs get high enough to actually fly. Fact 10. A dangerous weed rumor about North Korea often does the rounds. Reported by a number of 420-friendly publications like High Times and Mary Jane, it was an urban legend that despite all the other dystopian restrictions, the North Korean government is surprisingly chill about cannabis use, especially for tourists. While this is the kind of wacky North Korea fact that does numbers on the internet, it is something that might get you imprisoned or killed if you take it too seriously. While hemp is cultivated as an industrial production material in North Korea, cannabis is classified with the same drug restrictions as heroin and cocaine. And given the horrible fates undergone by tourists in North Korea, for something as seemingly minor as stealing a political poster, you really should not take your chances breaking any of their laws. Or better yet, just don't go there. Fact 9. Who has the world's cheapest and most expensive cannabis? In a study conducted in 2018, it was found that Japan had the world's most expensive green, coming in at 32 US dollars per gram. If flying high in the land of the rising sun feels a little steep for your wallet, then you'd be better off vacationing in Quito, Ecuador, where the price of marijuana averages $1.34 per gram. Fact 8. Malaysia has some of the most brutal anti-drug laws in the world. Planting a single cannabis seed will put you in prison for the rest of your life. Being caught possessing 20 grams will get you lashed, 50 grams will get you 5 years in jail, and a fine equating to almost $5,000. Up until 2018, having 200 grams was considered trafficking, and you could get sentenced to death. But now, it'll only put you behind bars for the rest of your life. Yay? Fact 7. Carl's Jr. once served a weed burger for 420. Seriously, back in 2019, as part of a special promotion for 420, they released the Rocky Mountain High Cheeseburger Delight, which had a special Santa Fe sauce infused with a small quantity of CBD. It was only available for a single day at one of their locations in Colorado, 
but for any pot fans in the area, it was a day to remember. Fact 6. Ever been curious about the actual difference between a joint, a spliff, and a blunt, but been too afraid to look lame if you asked? The difference is actually pretty simple. Joints are small quantities of cannabis wrapped in rolling paper. Spliffs aren't pure cannabis. They're a mix of cannabis and tobacco in rolling paper. And blunts, if we can be blunt about it, are bigger loads of cannabis wrapped in cigar or blunt wraps, which normally also contain tobacco. Now you're familiar with all the key weed smoking lingo. Fact 5. One man had the guts to smoke weed in the White House while weed was still illegal everywhere in the United States. It was none other than country music god Willie Nelson, who during the Carter administration snuck a joint into the White House and lit it up on the roof with the president's son Chip Carter. It was thought to be a stoner urban legend for years until ex-president Jimmy Carter himself confirmed that the story was true. Rock on, Willie. Fact 4. Weed has been inspiring Hollywood movies for almost a century. Stoner comedy is a movie institution, with stoned adventures being seen in Pineapple Express, Dude Where's My Car, and the Harold and Kumar trilogy. But the first ever movie inspired by weed was 1936's Reefer Madness. But this wasn't a comedy, at least not intentionally. It was a propaganda movie that implied smoking weed would turn you into a violent psychopathic killer and lead your life to ruin. Ironically, a lot of people get high to watch and laugh at it today. Fact 3. There are some negative side effects of smoking weed that you should look out for. While a lot of weed's impacts have historically been overblown as part of government scare campaigns, there are some scientifically proven negative effects. These include increased heart rate, which has been recorded as lasting for up to three hours after the user smoked, breathing problems since putting any kind of smoke into your lungs is going to irritate your airways. Chronic weed users also experience the classic smoker's cough and experience unpleasant phlegm buildup that leads to them coughing up gross gunk. And then there's the vomiting, nausea, paranoia, and sometimes even hallucinations that we mentioned earlier. And in the long run, chronic cannabis users might find themselves struggling with sleep issues, as well as difficulty self-motivating. This won't be true for all users, but there's always a non-zero chance. Fact 2. You can actually experience weed withdrawals when trying to come off the stuff. While experiencing the negative side effects of quitting weed is actually quite rare and is nothing like coming off of harder drugs like heroin, there are a constant set of symptoms for those who do suffer from weed withdrawals. So what can you expect from experiencing weed withdrawals? The most common symptoms include reduced appetite, the opposite of the famous munchies, mood swings, and a general sense of irritability, difficulty sleeping, including insomnia and strange dreams, headaches, an inability to focus, weed cravings, chills and cold sweats, digestive issues, and a general feeling of depression. That's why a lot of chronic users struggle to come off this stuff. And of course, fact 1. The US Coast Guard seized 54 tons of marijuana in a single bust back in 1977. The night train seizure occurred off the coast of Florida and was the beginning of Operation Stopgap, the first interagency initiative to stop drug trafficking. It was carried out by the Coast Guard, the DEA, and the Federal Marshals and remains one of the biggest weed busts in history. Now check out what happens to your brain if you smoke weed for 30 days or watch this video instead.